All right, I will show you guys how to take care of this integral by interpreting this with areas. Check this out. First, we are going to grab this function. So let's go ahead and put that down right here. And let's put this into the y equals mx plus b form. So we have negative x plus 1. We know 1 is the y-intercept. So let's go up right here. And then the slope right here is negative 1. So that means we go down 1 and go to the right 1. So we can put another point here. And uh, let's go ahead and just connect the dots. So that will be a sketch. Now more importantly, we care about when x is negative 1 up to x equals 2. So if x is negative 1 plug in here, we get y equals negative negative 1 and then plus 1. That's just 1 plus 1, which is 2. So when x is negative 1, the y value here is 2. So this is our starting. And then plugging 2 into the function, we have negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 1. So let's say negative, let's say 2 is right here, and then the y value here is negative 1. So this right here is negative 1. So now we see that we have two triangles, and this point right here is 1, because earlier when we, when we go down one time, we move to the right one time, that is exactly the x-intercept. Now, we have to break this down into two parts. This right here will be First, the integral going from negative 1 to 1 of the function, which is 1 minus x dx. And we want to take care of this part right here first. And that's just going to be the area of a triangle. Then we are going to add this with the integral going from 1 to 2 of the function, which is 1 minus x. And that is going to be the area of this triangle, but that is below the x-axis, so you have to make sure that you account for the integral being negative. So we don't need that anymore. Let me just erase that. Now let's just go ahead and do the area of a triangle. Check this out. From sorry, from here to here, negative one to one, the whole thing is two, right? And then from here to here, this is also two. So the base is two, the height is also two. So the area of this is just one half, base is two, the height is also two, work that out, we get two. And the region is above the x-axis. So the integral is positive. So we have positive two right here. So let me just put that down here to emphasize that. And then now we are going to add this width. Let's check this out. From one to two, this is one. From here to here is one if you look at this as geometry it's just one and one and then if you look at the area here is one half times one and one that will give us one half but for the integral because the region is below the x-axis so you have to say that it's negative one half all right now finally two minus one half we get three half check this out. First, I would like to break this down into two integrals. The first one is the integral going from negative 3 to 0 of 1 and then dx. Next, we are going to add this with integral going from negative 3 to 0 square root of 9 minus x squared dx. And then we are just going to graph this function and that function separately and then interpret the areas. So, here we go for the first one. We have to graph 1. So it's going to look like this. So let's say we have our 1 right here. This is y equals 1. And we care about from negative 3 to 0. And we have to find the area of this region, which is really not bad. It's just a rectangle. So the area of this is, of course, base times height or length times width. The bottom here is 3. The side here is 1, so all in all, we see that the area is just 3 times 1. So, 3, done. So the first integral will give us 3. Then, we are going to add this width. 
this function, hmm, what does a graph of that look like? And the answer for that is going to be a circle. Let me remind you guys on the side. So note, if we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, this is going to give us an equation of a circle. The radius is r, and then the center is 0, 0. So let me just put this down right here. So it will be like this. Why did I make the bottom so long? Like, like this. Center at 0, 0. All right. And of course, you can um, just like minus the x squared on both sides. So y squared equals r squared minus x squared. And if you take the positive square root, this will give us the upper half of the circle. So the upper semicircle. Okay, so that's how we get that graph. If you have the negative, right, because when you take the square root of both sides, you are supposed to put a plus or minus. But if you put a, mm, let, let's do this. We have the plus and also the negative. Yeah. So the, the red part is the part above and the negative is the part below, which is the blue part. All right, so cool. That being said, we know that this is going to give us a semicircle, so it will look like this. And the radius is 3 because 3 squared is 9. And we just care about this region. It's a quarter of a circle. It's just like a waffle, and you cut into four pieces. All right, so how do we find the area? It's a quarter of a circle, so we put 1 over 4 pi r squared. Pi is pi. And the r is 3, from here to here. Well, I'm talking about the length. That's why I only put down 3. And uh, we square that, which is 9 over 4 times pi. So the second integral gives us 9 pi over 4. And if you want to combine the fractions, go ahead, be my guest. If not, just leave the answer like this. That is totally OK. Check this out. Firstly, of course, we will have to graph this function, and that's the absolute value function. So here is the DEO. It's going to look like a V, especially that you don't have any, like, you know, subtract or add anything with x. It's just one half times x instead of the absolute value. So this is what I recommend you guys to do. We know y equals absolute value of one half x. Let's go ahead and plug in negative 4. So we will get y equals absolute value of 1 half times negative 4. 1 half negative 4 is negative 2. Absolute value of that is 2. So when x is at negative 4, the y value is 2. So we have this point right here. And then plugging 3. So y equals absolute value of 1 half and then 3 is going to be 3 half positive. So when x is 3, that's it's right here. 3 half, it's a little bit below. Mm, let me just put it down like this. 3 over 2, like that. And the corner is going to be at 0. So again, like the standard v like this. Right? Something like that. So this time we have two triangles. And we want to go from here to here. Let's find the area of the first one. To do so, notice that the base is from negative 4 to 0, which is 4. The height is 2. So figure this out, the area right here. All we have to do is just put 1 half base times height. No, height times base, same thing, doesn't matter. All right, base times height, I'll put down 4 first. Doesn't matter, though. Which is 4. Done. Now for the second one, we have to figure out this right here, and uh, that is from 0 to 3, and then from here to here, which is 3 over 2. So the area for that will be, let me put this down like this, 1 half base times height, 9 on the top, 4 on the bottom, so just like that. So this right here is just going to be 4 from the first part, and then we add this with 
9 over 4. And then get your common denominator. Uh, that should be 16 over 4 plus 9 over 4. So you have 25 over 4. That's it.